there everyone and welcome to TVS Nightline here with me Shaur Shamrato. As always, thank you for joining us tonight. Now on to the headlines. Our top headlining story today, as many as 58 illegal immigrants or party from Indonesia had been detained so far in an ongoing operation dubbed Ops Jala. Now, according to Deputy Director of the State Security and Enforcement Unit, or UKPN, Datuk Mohamad Morshidi Mustafa, the operation aimed at curbing imported cases of COVID-19 in the state. 58 illegal immigrants were detained under Section 15.1 of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988, Act 342, and held at a temporary quarantine center. Daripada 58 uh, parti yang ditangkap, semuanya Indonesia. Dan uh, masih lagi dalam pusat tahanan. Dan the first swap yang kita ambil negatif. Dan hopefully uh, waiting for the second swap. He said the operation employing the strategy of reducing requests, limiting movement and deporting illegal immigrants will be carried out continuously and in stages. Meanwhile, he also expressed worry on the rising number of illegal immigrants in the future due to the limited space in detention centers. However, he said a few temporary detention facilities have been identified. Dan uh, sedang pun uh, diusahakan oleh uh, kerajaan Negeri Sarawak dan uh, kita telah mengenal pasti beberapa tempat yang telah pun diluluskan oleh uh, Majlis Keselamatan Negara ataupun beberapa tempat di Kuching, Sibu dan Miri. For the record, 36 premises have been inspected under the operation and 668 locals and 625 foreigners, including Indonesians, Pakistanis, Indians, Filipinos, Chinese and Myanmar nationals, have been checked. Meanwhile, the changes to the teaching and learning process, according to the new norm, have definitely impacted society, especially students. There could be few issues for those with gadgets and acceptable internet access. But what about students who don't have these conveniences? Meanwhile, in the Muaratuang State constituency, students can now use its service centre to participate in the teaching and learning from home process. Maratuang Assemblyman Dato Idris Buang has taken the initiative to assist students to participate in teaching and learning from home or PDPR by providing a place with good internet connectivity to students. This could enable students to continue the school session and avoid being left behind in education. Although the Community Internet Centre has been provided to assist students with PDPR, the capacity to use the facility is however not adequate. Tapi kita pun uh, di pusat imat kita telah uh, memberi arahan untuk memberitahu uh, mana-mana pelajar yang ada sukar untuk mendapat uh, apa nama connection, uh, connectivity yang bagus, mereka boleh datang ke pusat imat kita, kita beri ruang di sekitar pusat imat kita, jaga distancing untuk mereka menggunakan internet, wifi kita. Itu satu langkah. Kita ada mempunyai di Kota Semarang ni, orang Motong ni kita ada mempunyai dua pusat markas kita kelah. Markas para sip. Ni markas pertama. Markas kedua tak jauh dari sini dekat Jambat tu. Kita ada markas kedua. Dua-dua ada apa nama uh, internet uh, punya. Nak menjadikan dalam uh, minggu depan. Kita nak menjadikan tempat. Mungkin untuk kalau di sini mungkin untuk dua puluh orang, mungkin sebelah sana dua puluh orang, ya kursi meja mungkin laptop mereka bawa sendiri. Kalau tak ada laptop kita gunakan fasiliti yang ada pada kita kita ataupun kita ganti. Interestingly, he also informed that his party will provide transport to students without their own transportation to come to the service center. Tak perlu, kita, dia, dia boleh berhubung dengan kita. Kalau dia baik tak ada transport, ha, itu mungkin kita minta ketua masyarakat lah, KM, KK, ketua kaum dan pengulu ha, di tempat masing-masing berhubungi, menghubungi kita. Mereka boleh ambil Grab, mereka boleh ambil van, Grab, apakah, ha, kita boleh bayar. Kita boleh, tolong, bayar. Ha, saya minta lah kerjaan kalau dapat, buatlah internet center. Okay. 
Now, Miri City Council or MBM will now take a more stringent action against violators of standard operating procedures by issuing compounds starting January 26. According to Miri City Mayor Adam Yee, his party is now more stern in ensuring the compliance of standard operating procedures in Red Zone Miri. He also went down to the ground to inspect a few food premises situated in downtown Miri on Tuesday, along with a few MBM senior officers and six enforcement personnel to ensure that SOP is being complied with, not just by the traders, but also patrons coming to visit. According to him, his party will not take lightly the issue and urge the residents to cooperate fully in adhering to SOPs and severing the chain of COVID-19. Now, the price of onions in the country has stabilized and there is sufficient supply to last until August. This is because India, being the main exporter to Malaysia, has recovered from recent flooding and has begun exporting its onions again. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Dato Alexander Nantalingi confirmed this after a visit to a wholesaler in Klang. Among others, the inspection was also to ensure supply of onions was enough to meet demands during the movement control order and the upcoming Chinese New Year period. During the visit to the wholesaler, the ministry was informed that supply of onions has stabilized and enough for consumers until August. Nanta said Malaysia imported 489,297 metric tons of onions last year from 24 countries. The highest are India, which consists of 31 percent, followed by Pakistan at 24 percent and China at 22 percent. Nanta said Malaysia imported the most from India, totaling 152,519 metric tons, as its onions were generally preferred by Malaysians. Meanwhile, following the same news as traders in the state were asked to display the prices of red onions in order to avoid the issue of price gouging, especially in rural areas. The matter was stressed by the Consumer Voice Association of Sarawak President Michael Tiong when commenting on the stable supply of onions. According to him, this is crucial to ensure that there is no profiteering of controlled goods. Kalau penyaga di kawasan pedalaman supaya jangan uh, menaikkan harga bawang. Selari dengan uh, kalau boleh selari dengan harga bawang di Kuching, hmm. kawasan bandar, bandar raya sebab dia orang boleh untung dari tempat lain dah. Dari produk-produk yang lain. Betul. Tak semestinya bawang sebab bawang ini ialah keperluan makanan keperluan seharian no. Setiap hari kita semua makan bawang. No? However, he said the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs are consistently conducting daily monitoring on essential goods during the movement control order period. Tinggi, kalau terlampau tinggi, sebab KBDN dia ada set satu ceiling price, price uh, yang ada limit dia. So kalau sesuatu tempat tu melebihi uh, garis panduan itu, bolehlah uh, pengguna uh, mengadu kepada KBD yang HCP ataupun uh, persatuan pengguna. Sebab kalau dia melebihi garis panduan itu, itu sudah berada di bawah MP Profitering Act. Now moving on to current developments as the state development policy is now focused on rural areas. To that end, the Sarawak government has allocated as much as 9.832 billion ringgit in the 2021 state budget. In a previous state legislative assembly meeting, Chief Minister Dr. Panigi Abang Johari Tun Openg said a large portion of the development expenditure is focused on rural areas. The large allocation is in line with the state government's aim to accelerate development in rural areas in the effort to bridge the gap between urban and rural areas. For this purpose, 4.251 billion ringgit, or 67% of the total development expenditure, will go to implementing rural programs and projects. The remaining 2.053 billion ringgit, or 33%, is reserved for urban areas. All initiatives, projects and certain programs will transform the state economy and the prosperity of Sarawakians. There's no doubt that the people have long awaited these plans, especially those in rural areas that still need continuous development. For pensioner Mathias Raya, changes enjoyed by the people nowadays is significantly different than from before, and he hopes that development can continue through long-term planning. Okay, pembangunan 
jalan sudah ada, mungkin jalan tambah baik lagi, dibesarkan lagi, bangunan kerajaan diserikai akan diperbesar dan bertambah lagi. Dan saya fikir seperti dewan-dewan untuk rakyat berjumpa lebih besar. Tak susah lagi. Despite the drastic physical changes seen in Sarike and its surroundings, there are still some things that need to be improved in order to ensure balance in the people's socio-economics. This includes plans to establish an agriculture park in Sarawak Central Region that is famous for its food basket industry. Idea, idea yang concrete, terutama dalam uh, meningkatkan taraf ekonomi penduduk di Sarike. Sekarang kita dalam perancangan lah apa yang kita diberitahu untuk merubah, merubuhkan satu agro agrikultur lah agro pertanian. Jadi pembangunan yang berterusan daripada YB YB yang dikatakan uh, berkelibat lah, terutama dari segi kita kata kita katakan future, futuristic minded. Menggantikan yang dulu-dulu itu sekurang-kurangnya menampakkan impak pembangunan yang berterusan. The allocation of 1.1 billion ringgit to implement people's projects, rural transformation projects and minor rural projects is hoped to realize the development of basic public facilities, simultaneously upgrading the people's living standards. With a long-term plan under the Ulu Rajang Development Agency, Sarike could be promoted into a city. This is based on the division's rapid growth, as it is situated in the Bali of Sarawak and the focus of people in northern and southern Sarawak. Mm. Sebab Sarike tengok itu dari datang orang, ropang punya orang, selatok, itu asid, uh, itu dekat itu betong, itu lau pakang, anyway lah. Semua boleh datang kumpul di Sarike. Melalui ini Tanjung Manis punya jalan, uh, Sarike punya jalan ke Tanjung Manis. Supaya ini Sarike ya, sekarang saya orang kasih ubah banyak orang surah datang. Sekarang saya cakap sama Tuan, Sarike sini sekarang boleh bikin tengok hari santai pun boleh. Hari Saturday, Sunday, semua penuh, traffic chain. Macam city. Saya kira satu hari saya harap-harap in future Sarike boleh macam macam ini. Tidak lama boleh jadi city lah. Sarike's population is so far estimated to be more than 200,000 people. Hello there everyone and welcome back. Now on to some COVID-19 development as Sarawak recorded a drop in new positive COVID-19 cases today with 70 cases. However, the state also recorded one death which was registered in Cebu district. Kes baru mengenai kematian kes ke-34 merupakan kes ke-1745. Melibatkan seorang lelaki warga tempatan berumur 74 tahun mendapat rawatan di Hospital Sibu dan pada 17 hari bulan saringan didapati positif. Dia meninggal dunia pada 26 Januari. Kes mempunyai komobit penyakit gout. Uga said the highest number of cases was recorded in Cebu with 34 cases, followed by Dalat with 10 cases and Bintulu with 9 cases. The number of positive cases in the state has now increased to 3,774. Meanwhile, the Movement Control Order, or MCO, in Cebu will be extended effective midnight on January 30 until February 14. The extension also applied to the Conditional Movement Control Order, or CMCO, for all other districts in the state, which will be enforced from midnight of February 1 to February 14. <laughs> telah membuat keputusan seperti berikut. Pelanjutan peringkat Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan di Sibu. Pelanjutan pelaksanaan Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan PKP di bahagian Sibu 
akan dilanjutkan dari 30 Januari tengah malam hingga 14 Februari 2021. Ini untuk Sibu bagi kawasan-kawasan lain di seluruh negeri Sarawak. Ianya kita akan meneruskan Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan Bersyarat. Ini juga akan berkuat kuasa dari 1 Februari hingga 14 Februari 2021. To date, there are only 11 green zones out of 40 districts remaining. Uga said this shows that the COVID-19 situation in Sarawak is not under control yet. Now, following the next news, as thalassemia carriers are unable to produce normal red blood cells, causing their red blood cell functions to be impaired, and they need regular blood transfusions. 5% or 1 in every 20 Form 4 students screened between 2016 and 2018 are thalassemia carriers. According to Minister of Health, Datuk Seri Dr. Adam Baba, throughout the period, a total of 689,460 Form 4 students were screened and 31,716 of them were found to be carriers of thalassemia. He said 86.2% of parents had given permission for their children to undergo thalassemia screenings at school since the program was introduced to all four formers in 2016. Usaha pencegahan penyakit thalassemia mesti dilaksanakan bagi memastikan bilangan pesakit thalassemia baru berkurangan. Dr. Adam explained that those living with thalassemia are unable to produce normal red blood cells. This caused their red blood cell functions to be impaired and they need regular blood transfusions. Pesakit thalassemia juga cenderung untuk mendapat komplikasi penyakit dan komplikasi rawatan jika pesakit tidak patuh kepada rejim rawatan dan pemantauan pakar. Dr. Adam said those who were aware of their thalassemia status should function as an agent of change to educate their close family members on the importance of undergoing screenings for the sake of their future generations. Now, Padawan Municipal Council or MPP has reminded business operators to conduct thorough cleaning and sanitization of their premises on a daily basis. Its chairman, Lo Ker Chiang, emphasized on the crucial needs of practicing good hygiene, especially for places that were exposed to COVID-19, as listed by the Ministry for Local Government and Housing. Lo also called on the public to have resolve and improve self-discipline in the fight against COVID-19. Meanwhile, he urged the public not to be complacent about rabies in the shadow of COVID-19. Lo reminded the public that Sarawa is still in the fight against rabies, which is one of the most devastating viral diseases affecting mammals, including dogs and humans. He added the council is actively carrying out stray removal activities at the areas with positive rabies cases. Now picture this. Should there be another full lockdown imposed on economic activities similar to the one imposed last year? Such approach will result with 2.8 million people at risk of losing their jobs. Senior Minister for Security Cluster Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob painted a grim picture for Malaysians. Should another lockdown imposed on economic sector, 2.8 million people will risk losing their jobs. He said that 2.8 million more people also stand to lose their income if another MCO as 2020s is imposed to tackle COVID-19. Malaysia is now under a second, more relaxed MCO, dubbed MCO 2.0. Ismail said rumours on social media over the past days that the government would impose a full lockdown from February 4 was causing the public alarm and panic buying. He stressed any decision on the matter must take into account both lives and livelihoods. It would also be based on the health ministry's recommendations and discussed at the level of the National Security Council. Thank you for staying with me. Now, a taxi that was reported missing has been recovered near SK Telagu's Juro Surian. The vehicle was successfully pulled out with the assistance of estate workers. Prior to the discovery, a taxi driver was assaulted and had his taxi driven off by two of his customers believed to be Indonesians.
According to District Police Chief Deputy Superintendent Aswandi Anis, the incident was reported at about 5.15 p.m. on Tuesday by passersby after they saw the 62-year-old taxi driver by the roadside in Kampong, Belimbing. The victim commented that they were headed for Gedong and Balai Ringin. Both customers were picked up from Kuching Central. Upon reaching the destination, the suspects told the victim to stop by the road outside and hit him on the head. The victim managed to escape. Police launched a manhunt called named Ops Kassan for the two suspects. Following the investigation, estate workers managed to pull out the stolen taxi during the search at a set location. However, the suit suspects is still at large. Meanwhile, the case is being investigated under Section 395 of the Penal Code for Gang Robbery. A maintenance worker was killed after he got trapped between the doors of an elevator he was performing maintenance on at an apartment building in Kota, Samarahan. Malaysian Fire and Rescue Department Operations Centre Sarawak received a call on the incident at 9.56 a.m. The 39-year-old man whose head and legs were trapped was confirmed dead on the scene by the medical team present. Bomba personnel, assisted by the building management staff, took around two hours to pry the victim's trapped body out. The body was then handed over to the police for further action and investigations to discover the cause of the incident are still ongoing. Now, the Sarawak River Board, or LSS, and Sarawak Region Marine Department will investigate the collision between a ferry and vessel in Ridan River, Marudi. Sarawak Transport Minister Datuk Lee Kim Shin said a team of LSS and JLWS officers have been deployed to the location in order to investigate the incident. Lee said a full investigation will be carried out involving all aspects such as the captain's statement, license, machine condition and damages incurred. He said the incident fortunately did not cause any oil spillage and harm to the public. A police report has been made by the owner of the ferry at Marudi Police Station on the same day. In a 38-second long closed-circuit television video recording, the ferry was seen colliding the side of a vessel around 4.15 Tuesday evening. Lee also advised all ships operating in the rivers all across Sarawak to improve their safety, especially during the rainy season. A good news as Petroleum Nacional Berhardo Petronas has retained its position as the most valuable Asian Brazilian brand in the Brand Finance Global 500 report for 2021. In a statement today, the national oil company said it also remains in the ninth spot among the brand valuation consultancy's listing of global oil and gas brands. Petronas's brand strength index has also improved to 87 points from 86.3 in 2020. The index is judged on a brand's performance based on intangible measures relative to its competitors. Brand finance attributes Petronas's ranking to its consistent brand performance, contributing to a brand value of 12.04 billion US dollars, despite a drop from 15.2 billion US dollars in 2020. Brand finance considers three key components in calculating a brand's value: the brand's strength, business, and economic outlook. All 20 oil and gas brands on the list have seen a drop in their brand value, mostly due to business and external factors. Now Manchester City climbed to the top of the Premier League by handing West Brom another home hammering. No team in Europe's top five divisions has conceded as many goals at home and West Brom were ruthlessly exposed again by a brilliant attacking display. And that concludes TVS Nightline for tonight. Here with me, Shaul Shamnator. I'll see you next time and have a good night.